Benoît Terrier. Benoît, the floor is yours. Good afternoon. So I'm Benoit Terrier. I'm from the Water Agency from the Rhone Mediterranean and Corsican catchment. I want to thank uh, Andrea and Sir for the invitation. I'm quite happy actually to present examples of river restoration after Fernando, um, as I think that Spain, France, Italy can join forces as Mediterranean countries to show you know, good practice in river restoration. So just uh, an introduction also to present what um, the agency is doing in terms of river restoration. Ecological river restoration is one of the top priorities for the agency. Um, we think it is crucial to reach good ecological uh, status. And we spend about uh, 450 million euros uh, on ecological uh, restoration. So that was the budget for the past six years and that is likely to be the budget for the next six years as well. Every year, we approximately restore ecological continuity on about 150 to 200 weirs. Um, so over the past few years, um, weir removal has increased. The proportion of weirs that are now removed has increased. It used to be one in four, one in five maybe, and it's now gone up to one in three weir uh, removed. And Depending on the years, we also have an increase in, um, in uh, morphological restoration as we carry out about uh, river restoration on about 120 kilometers of rivers. That is for quite substantial uh, morphological re restoration like remeandering or so forth. Um, so the these home project I'm going to tell you about um, is um, located to the south of Lyon. So it is in Oulin. Oulin is a suburb of uh, Lyon, to the south of Lyon. You can go from Oulin to Lyon with the underground. Um, it's got about 30,000 people, and it's quite densely um, populated, about 6,000 people per square kilometer. The river is 25 kilometers long, and it is a, a direct tributary to the Rhone River. It's got a catchment area of about 140 square kilometers. Now, um, this is just a sketch to tell you that it is an example of urban river restoration project. And I will illustrate with some photos um, that it is also a quite dense, densely urbanized um, area. So in the 1960s, there was a 1.5 kilometer uh, concrete channel that was built in Oulin. Um, the purpose of this concrete channel was to avoid flooding, mostly. However, um, from an ecological point of view, it's not difficult to see that it was a disaster. And also, it was not efficient at all at preventing flooding. Um, and adding to this, it was not very well accepted socially. It was kind of a lost river, really, in the, in the city of Oulin. Um, so this map shows you um, where the um, restoration took place. So you can see the black stars, between the two black stars, is where the concrete channel was removed. Um, the yellow diamonds, you can see, are areas which flooded many times over the past few years. So all those days here are days where there had been flooding in Oulin. And you can see why the people living near the river got really fed up with the flooding. Um, we had the 2003 flood event, which, which was a one in 30 year event, which really um, was quite a strong event for, for the people. And there was an increase um, in frequency and intensity in flood events, which was related to an increase in rainfall intensity. This is not a pattern that has been observed um, in other places, well, not generally in other places of the Rhone um, River Basin, but in Oulin, there has been a, an increase in rainfall intensity over the past few years. Now, some example of um, urbanization. So the concrete channel, you can see some, also some concrete walls. Um, and also, you can see that the riparian veg vegetation that we had 
was quite not diverse, you could say, because it was basically 100% in some riches um, Japanese knotweed, Fallopia japonica, um, which made also the river restoration project a bit more costly than what it was supposed to be. Um, because you cannot simply take the ground material and reuse it. That's not possible. You have to dump it in some uh, a special site. Um, so that was in 2011, before the river restoration. These are other photos of the uh, concrete channel. Uh, so you can see how the river was in 1900 and how it was in 2013. And there was, after the, uh, the flood events, there was a river contract which was signed in 2002. So a river contract in France is a tool that we use when we have identified a lot of work to carry, carry out. Um, so there is a river committee that will form uh, between decision makers and uh, um, also you, uh, you know, associations and so forth. And it identified three main issues, flooding, of course, water quality, and ecology. There was a local organization, a syndicat, a syndicate, the SAGIRC, that was set up to lead the river basin management plan. And there was a consultancy which was hired to design a scheme that would tackle those issues. Now then, there was a first draft, a first project that was proposed, and the first draft of the project was very hydraulic orientated. Basically, let's make a bigger concrete channel. Now, we were not happy um, with that proposal. Um, and how do you move towards a more integrated project? Okay, we had this, you know, um, this report, which was basically telling us, okay, we could tackle the flood issue with, the, um, with a bigger concrete channel. Um, but then it did not address at all the ecological issues. So what did we do? There was a survey um, conducted on 108 people who took part in that survey uh, in the town of Oulin. And it looked at people's expectation. So of course, flood protection you know, was quite high among the priorities of people. But then also riverbed and bank ecological restoration was also high, as well as a better landscape in the city and also space for walking. So clearly, there was a need for a better urban landscape and a more natural river. And this survey is something that now we use more and more to survey people's expectations, because that can give a voice to sometimes what is like a silent majority that otherwise would not be able to express itself. Also, uh, we had a more multidisciplinary approach. So we asked geomorphologists and hydrobiologists and local nature associations um, about their views on how we could design a better scheme. The Water Catchment Agency also would increase financial contribution from 4% to 17% if we took better account of the, of the ecology. So in France, the Agence de l'eau, the river basin agency, are responsible for um, ecological river restoration, for example, for reaching the water framework directive targets, and flooding is more managed by the state. But we can come and finance projects if they are integrated projects, and they should be integrated projects. Um, there was a new consultancy which was hired, and so they looked at uh, different scenarios. There were public exhibitions, newsletters, video clips. There was a YouTube channel as well. Um, here are some examples. Uh, you have on the website of the Sergirc, you know, bringing the people back to the river, uh, Twitter account, and so forth. So a lot of efforts on communication. And so uh, a more integrated project was decided. Um, so that would take into account the social expectations based on the research from the survey and public exhibitions for a better landscape and a nicer environment. Also taking better account of water quality and um, uh, sewage work um, management as well, and the ecology. Now then, one thing that proved really important to convince decision makers and mayors of Oulin to really go for this uh, project was 3D visualization. And this is something that we see in many, many projects, river restoration projects. Decision makers sometimes struggle to see what the river can look like if we, after the restoration. 
Um, and those tools really are useful so that um, they can see that you know, the world won't end after river restoration. Quite on the contrary, you might have a much better environment. Okay, so this is before work and the projected work with the, you know, some people uh, brought back to the river. Now, this is a catchment scale project. So the area where the concrete channel was, the 1.5 kilometer, is at the downstream end. The uh, kind of red dots are the weirs that have already been equipped with fish pass or removed. And the yellow dots are the weirs that had to be removed. Um, the project took place between um, uh, 2014 and December 2015. It lasted about one and a half year. So it was a 1.5 kilometer of a river which was restored with a concrete channel that was demolished. Um, there was a 1.1 kilometer of walking path built, very important for the people. Vegetation was planted and there were three small spanning bridges built for walking and crossing the rivers also as access to the river was a key point of the project. It can be said that it was quite an ambitious project because um, when you look at the literature in quite dense urban areas, um, the, the linear of river restoration is usually quite small. In the US, there was a, a you know, literature review that showed that it was about 600 meters in 2007. Probably now we have more and more ambitious projects, so I guess it would be higher, much higher now. But um, also, it's an example of passive river restoration. By that, we mean that actually there was not much work done on the, the geomorphology. The idea was to let the river basically rework it, uh, reworks its channel by itself. And that, that's what it did actually quite quickly because um, quite soon after the project was completed, we had a 10-year flood event. And so the morphology changed completely after the flood event. So here is what it looks like. So you have to realize that, for example, a car park was removed for this new project, and the people were happy to sacrifice a car park to get a better uh, urban environment. Um, so the, the photograph on the right was taken straight after the, uh, the restoration. Here, it's a photograph which was taken a couple of years later, and you can see that the vegeta vegetation has come back quite nicely, and the environment has transformed completely. Some more example of before and after. So you can see this walking path on the bottom uh, right is, uh, is very popular now with the people of Oulin. And there was a monitoring program which was um, set up. There were questions to be answered, you know, will the flood alleviation be efficient? What will be the ecological response to the project? What also will be the social response? You know, will the people like the project? So um, we, uh, this site is part of a network of sites in France that we call um, demonstration site, river restoration site. It's a network of sites where we carry out monitoring on a long-term basis. By long-term basis, we mean, I mean 10-year period, more or less. We try to have two to three years of data before river restoration and at least six to nine years after river restoration. And in my river, in our agency, we have about 20 sites in this network of sites, and this is one of uh, the sites. Um, and so on those projects, we carry out hydromorphological survey. Uh, so we have a French protocol, CARIS. Uh, we look at the biolog biological response, fish, macroinvertebrates, vegetation, and so forth. And also, we don't do that on all projects, but on this one, um, we had researchers that actually looked at social perception of the project through interviews. Now, I don't have, unfortunately, biological results to show you because uh, the consultancy that uh, did the monitoring went bankrupt. Um, so we had to hire another consultancy. So you don't pay them enough? <laughs> um, I think it was not down to us, but um, anyway, the, we had to change and find, find another consultancy to, to carry out the monitoring, which we did. Um, but I looked at the results, and 
basically the and also the fish federation local organization uh, fishermen local organization also carried out some um, surveying and what we see is that we have a good very good response from the fish point of view uh, with fish migration from upstream and from downstream we have new species that were in the Rhone that are now have moved to this reach we have multiplied the number of fish in this area by four. So these are early results, but the, the trend is, is very encouraging. So how much did it cost? The total cost for this reach was 7.5 million euros. And the complete scheme, when it will be finalized at the catchment scale, uh, will be 43.5 million euros. Now the cost benefit analysis shows that for a 100 year uh, event, the benefits will be of 2.74 euros per one euro invested. So a return on investment of 18 years. And that does not in take into account the environmental and social benefits for restoring a more natural river. So to conclude on this project, you could say that this river um, was quite you know, burden for the people uh, living by the river. And it's become more of an asset for the territory. We have very positive feedback for the local inhabitants. Um, it was a purely flood alleviation project that could have ended up with a bigger concrete channel and which ended up like an urban river restoration project. Now, among the lessons that we learn, of course, is the necessity to have a multidisciplinary approach. The first consultancy was very hydraulic minded and it was not good enough. Visualization tools really help. We see that in many other projects. There is a lot of communication also which is needed to explain the people and the decision makers of the interest of such projects. Um, listening to people's expectations also helps. And then also the financial incentive for a more integrated project also helped a lot. Um, now the, the postcard looks nice. However, one thing is that we've had a severe drought in, in France and in our river basin, and there is no water at the moment in that river, and there has been no water for a few weeks, even months. It used to be the case before the concrete channel, but some people have forgotten about it. It used to be naturally an intermittent river. Now you have to explain the people that, yeah, there is no water, but it's normal. That's how the river used to be. Before, on the concrete channel, there was sometimes a trickle of water, poor quality water, but it was there. So this is something we have to work on at the moment. Um, just to open up on urban um, river restoration, which kind of urban environment do you prefer? Um, yeah. um, the one to the left or the one to the, to the right? It looks obvious, but in many areas, we still have you know, the, the environment on the, on the left. Um, so we have a project at the moment in, um, in France which is looking at urban river restoration projects. Um, the purpose is to write a guide on uh, urban river restoration and we have listed about 100 urban river restoration projects, about 120. Some are in very densely urbanized areas, some in not, not so densely urbanized areas. This is a project um, of the river Hermance in the Alps, that's near Switzerland. The photograph doesn't do it justice because it's actually, it crosses some uh, urbanized areas. And, um, and now you can see a few years later with the riparian vegetation, which has come back, especially with the heat in the summer, it's a really nice project. And we have quite other nice projects, but there is a lot of work to do still. And this is a map of my, um, some colleagues from uh, Marseille, uh, of PACA, so this is Provence, Alpes, Côte d'Azur, of other areas where such projects are either being implemented or the people are thinking about it. So for example, on the VAR, uh, up here, um, crossing Nice, in Nice, uh, we've had uh, uh, weirs that have been lowered and we have a braided pattern on the VAR river, which is coming back, uh, on the river Brague, uh, which is there. Also, we have another nice project which probably, like the river Isron, will take place. And we hope more and more projects um, like this one. And I thank you for your attention.
Molte grazie Benoit, c'è tempo per alcune, alcune domande. Nell'attesa ne, ne faccio una io intanto che arrivino domande dal pubblico. In questa rete di, di siti dimostrativi dove eh, richiedete un monitoraggio di lungo periodo, che noi crediamo che sia un'ottima idea, infatti lo proponiamo da tempo anche, anche in Italia, eh, che tipo di ruolo ha l'Agence de l'Eau? Un ruolo attivo oppure semplicemente finanziate? E se finanziate e basta, eh, quali sono le difficoltà nell'avere diciamo, un portatore di progetto che si impegna per un così lungo periodo? Um, so, um, this is a project that we have um, uh, financed, but we are basically hiring the consultancy. So for every site, we are looking at the planning and we send the consultancy on the site and we liaise with the local organization um, to make sure that uh, the monitoring you know, is made in good conditions at the right time and so forth. So we decided to actually took it upon us to do that because, um, uh, because we could see that it was difficult to actually convince local stakeholders to actually carry out this monitoring over such a long period. However, now what we have uh, decided to do is that when we will subsidize um, ambitious projects, we will ask um, the local organization to carry out this monitoring because 20 sites for To as a project to manage, it's becoming quite uh, heavy. So um, now we will say, okay, we will subsidize you know, this river restoration project, but you will you know, manage the monitoring over this uh, long period. What I could say is that it's a national scheme. So all the river basin agencies are doing it. Some of them are doing it like we do, like you know, they will hire the consultancy and do some others, um, It is done by AFB, the Agence Française for Biodiversity. There are different organizations, but the idea is to have a, a network of sites big enough at a national scale so that with long-term monitoring on different uh, uh, BQEs, uh, biological quality elements, so that uh, in the end, you know, we can demonstrate also the, the benefits of uh, river restoration. Ah, AFB che menzionava un ruolo che è simile, diciamo che sia un po' più ampio come a quello di Ispra in, in Italia. Altre due domande, partiamo da qui, qui in mezzo. Grazie, hai accennato al problema della reinutria come un fattore di forte complicazione nella in questo tipo di progettazione. Volevo sapere se avete, eh, avuto, avete applicato delle metodologie particolarmente efficaci eh, in questo senso. Um, hmm. <laughs> That's That's a good question. Um, in this project, all we did was really complete removal of the ground and take it to a special refuse, a dumping site. Um, we've, had, we've tried different things. One thing which seems to be working in other areas is maybe to grind it you know, very thinly, the material very thinly, and then cover it for one, two years maybe. Um, but no, we've not been so successful at managing Japanese knotweed, generally. Quindi un metodo efficace, sì, però efficiente ancora, devono devo trovarlo. <laughs> Thanks, Benoit, for your relation. Uh, River Basin Authority is a point of reference for our activities. Uh, I had the temptation to declare the agnation of Piedmont to your basin, but uh, I think it's not, uh, not the case by now. Anyway, uh, uh, I was interested in particular in uh, one slide where you showed uh, the economic analysis on uh, your intervention. You showed uh, the costs, you showed the benefit, you showed how calculated and uh, the time of returns of investment. And uh, I was wondering uh, if uh, during your public events 
during the interaction with the public, you presented this data and with uh, 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 which feedbacks? Yes, we did present uh, this data. As we looked at different scenarios, we looked at also cost-benefit analysis. And um, yeah, that, that was quite a strong point for the people, you know, because it looks like a lot of money, but actually you're trying to solve in a small amount of time, you know, problems that have been there for decades sometimes. So it looks expensive, you know, on the, at the time, um, but actually when you look at it at a longer perspective, you know, it's actually not that expensive. And it, it's actually a worthwhile investment. So we try to do that more and more also on river restoration projects. Un'ultima brevissima domanda. And quick answer. Well. Eh, una domanda un po' più tecnica. Eh, Lili, quindi lo stimolo per fare questo intervento di riqualificazione è stato l'eccessiva frequenza delle alluvioni durante, lungo questo corso d'acqua. E dalle immagini che hai mostrato non si capisce in quale modo da un canale cementato che in teoria porta più efficacemente le portate a rinaturalizzarlo, avete guadagnato invece in sicurezza, cioè cos'è stato l'elemento progettuale che vi ha fatto ridurre la frequenza delle alluvioni? Ok. Um, yes, we actually had, we widened the space for the river by taking, removing car parks, um, space on the road also. There, there will be, a, like for example, a, a, a two-way street, which will become only, yeah, one way. <laughs> um, so that kind of things, and that's why also communicating to the people was important, because they might lose, you know, things, but the benefits w will be there. Um, so we, because we replace concrete by gravel, you know, uh, you change the roughness and you need to compensate by bigger space. And that's what we did actually, you know, trying to find that space um, to compensate for this loss uh, due to the roughness. Um, and that, you know, that's what uh, worked actually. Grazie ancora, grazie ancora Benoit. Mi spiace di interrompere la, la, la chiacchierata.